Hello, you're watching Bearwood West Yard. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you something a little bit different. So rather than focusing on the layout, I'm going to be taking you over to the workbench so I can show you what I've been working on over the last couple of months. The first conversion that I started was the conversion of Backman Brill Wagons into YK Osprey Wagons. Now, Salmon Flats, as the Ospreys were modified from, um, are available from Cambrian. However, due to the availability of them and the fact that I don't think that they're manufactured anymore, they're incredibly scarce. So I went for the easy option of getting a ready available wagon um, over getting um, just a small number of wagons from a varying number of suppliers mainly just for the financial side of things as well as not waiting around either way um, I've got three examples on the layout at the minute I was supposed to have a total of six however unfortunately uh, one example uh, didn't make it through the conversion stage so to be able to convert them uh, what I've done is I've cut down the sides, taken the bolsters off um, to get a nice flat bed uh, to replicate the salmon and uh, make, gave it a once over of engineer's olive and then uh, I made all of the stanchions out of plastic card from the evergreen range. That's all of varying dimensions. Uh, there is a guy on RM Web who built these stanchions either out of resin or other plastic card I followed his dimensions for these now um, with the brills they are undersized in the sense of that they are not 60 foot in length I think they're something like 50 52 foot some somewhere around there anyway so they are under scale but when you look at them from a distance you don't really notice the difference. Now I was able to get hold of the ASF bogies from Cambrian so I have included these to make them look as salmon like as possible and then for the little box on the underneath which I think is just visible in brown um, the little ratchet strap box uh, for that I actually cut up some of cut some of the cardboard from a lint chocolate box and that went together quite nicely with some rocket card glue um, and gave that a coat of um, I think it was either dark earth or um, another uh, wood textured paint on the underside of the wagon as you can see I've got the ASFs on there um, getting the ASFs to fit onto the backman wagons uh, was quite difficult because with Cambrian stock they don't contain they don't come with uh, the NEM sockets so from the original bogies I've had to butcher off the uh, NEM socket holder uh, super glue that on and then refit the NEM socket to be able to get the wagon to couple to other wagons and as if that wasn't uh, work enough um, when fitting the ASFs for the first time I found that they kept catching so I've had to uh, go out buy some washers um, of varying sizes and um, just to test to see whether um, I can get some clearance and funnily enough I've been able to but only with the washer a particular way round. Now the screw I've had to leave that um, a little bit looser than I would like but that's mainly um, so that it can actually traverse the curves otherwise um, what you might think might be okay for other wagons is actually too tight for it and that was all uh, fun and games trying to get these to work and uh, many hairs tried to be pulled out now for coupling the wagons together um, I opted for uh, Hatton's coupling draw bars which are supplied with the uh, FEA wagons as I've got those for another project now these are brilliant and I have emailed Hattons to say whether um, they would think about releasing these um, as an accessory like Backman do 
uh, with their carriage couplings as they're so good I think that um, they'd make money off of them uh, commercially just on their own as they're a, they're a sensible length and uh, they're alright I think now the only thing I will say um, is that I have found trouble with them in the sense of double slips and slip points they don't like them I'll just leave it at that it's mainly because there's not a lot of weight on the actual bogey itself it's not as uh, built up as the uh, standard bogeys so they do tend to jump a little bit but I haven't been able to tighten them mainly because otherwise it affects the running around the rest of the layout so I do limit them as to how I view them operationally so seeing these three on the layout let's take a look at the other two which are currently on the bench right so on to the rather messy and busy workbench <clears throat> I've got um, the two remaining uh, Ospreys to make so one of them is the brill and then the other one because uh, I wasn't able to get a hold of any more brills um, I had to go for the rail freight bolster both exactly the same model just different liveries so with these ones um, I did the exact same method as I mentioned before so the way that I get uh, the sides cut down um, is just by putting them in a vise and then scoring down down the side of them uh, just to plane it off um, the blades that I use as I found originally when I was doing this that my craft knife's blade was getting incredibly blunt very quickly um, and also Stanley knife as well um, I for the replacement blades for them uh, I went to a company recommended to me on, as of Facebook uh, called Scalpels and Blades relatively local being uh, in the West Country so um, and I have to say that the Swan and Morton blades supplied by them are probably the best blades I've ever uh, come across um, these have lasted me uh, a long time now um, I'm on the I'm still on the first pack and I bought them a good six months ago so uh, just goes to show you that if you uh, care for your blades then they will last you uh, a long time either way um, <clears throat> going back onto the wagons themselves uh, the stage that they're at now um, and the stage where I've filled in uh, all the nooks and crannies to give uh, the flatbed approach um, I didn't do this on the other ones and I relied heavily on the paint to just fill the cracks as the those were hand brushed so the approach I'm going for this time is um, airbrushing the engineers I live on um, so going for a total repaint rather than uh, doing the minimal amount of work that I have to so doing a proper job if you want to call it uh, for doing the filling um, I've got um, some Vallejo Paints uh, plastic putty um, this is ready av readily available off of Amazon for as little as about £2.50 I think per bottle so pretty cheap to be honest and uh, it lasts a while um, it's very, I was very liberal with it um, so did that in an evening came back to it the following afternoon once I'd allowed it time to cure um, and so I took that off with a uh, craft knife and also some uh, very fine sandpaper um, to make sure that I get um, the bed as level as possible um, either way I'll be airbrushing this as I think I've already said and I'll be giving it about two to three coats now the paint I use is Engineers Olive from Rail Much Paint which is paint number 234 And then for when it comes to finishing the wagon and putting on the various yellow markings along the side um, I've been doing some research on this and then as for the other three wagons that are complete um, I've used Martin Reed's website um, this is an absolute gem of a website it's got everything from locomotives um, to detail close-ups on track plant to wagons it's absolute of a gem of a website and that with all sorts of angles pretty much every detail you could want for whether it's doing a 
a weathering project or doing a full repaint and that is you can actually base stuff on uh, prototypes and although flick is good um, I have to say that um, there's a lot more consistency um, in this website and personally I prefer it whether you know about the website or not you do now so the next long-term project that I've had on my bench for a while is weathering up my fleet of 13 JNAs, which I am still looking to expand if possible. Now, for doing this, I have been using Reeves Paint number 4551076, which is burnt umber. Um, this is readily available at the range for about £4 a bottle. It might seem like a fair amount for... Um, for a sizable bottle it lasts a long time so you get your money's worth out of it and just on that one bottle I've done the majority of my fleet and have also uh, painted down some ground cover on the actual layout either way the way that I've weathered uh, my JNAs um, I started off by at first uh, using a method which I'm not going to go into um, as I found it quite obsolete but now all I do um, as I go over the sides with a cocktail stick, not every side, um, just some panels, some I leave bare, others I'll just knock some detail off. Um, but just enough uh, to create some ingress, uh, to leave some scratches and that, to show that um, they've been knocked about a bit when loading or unloading um, from the various work sites and yards. So when that's done, I've usually gone over it with some Humbrol paints, uh, number 29, which is Dark Earth. Um, haven't done that on all of them, just a couple of them. Um, I've caked it on like I have here, um, and then taken it down with some thinners, and then gone over it and done this method again uh, with the Reeves paint, um, and gone over it again with thinners, or because they're are you using acrylics for this, um, water is a suitable thinner um, and then you get something like that providing you're careful with it when I do um, brush off um, I use um, a small brush for it um, and then I also use a cotton bud um, for some areas mainly just so that I don't um, get rid of everything but yeah that's how I achieved that um, I have got a way to go with the rest of the fleet is I've got about six wagons or so done in the obsolete method that I'm going to redo. Again research for getting the wagons to this state um, was done on Martin Reed's website. I will leave a link down in the description to his website. This isn't a paid promotion by any means but me just showing off uh, Martin's website um, as it was a vital part in getting the wagons to uh, their current state. So I'll leave a link down in the description uh, for you to check out his website. Now by far the largest build on the bench at the minute is the YEA shoot wagon which is part of my rail delivery train uh, set that I'm scratch building. Now this has been a work in progress since August and I think now, as it is April, I can say that things have slowed down a hell of a lot. I did lose a lot of motivation around November and December, and I didn't really pick it up until around last month or so. So the beginning of March um, is when it really started picking up again after I left off um, around the end of October. So it's coming on. It's quite nicely, it's about, I'd say, 90% uh, of the way there. Um, there's a lot of things that I have to take into account for it. Um, so, beans that it is a modification from a Hornby KFA. Um, I would say it can be done, but it's just incredibly awkward. Um, there has been a lot of mishaps with it, considering that it is a quite fragile plastic card. Um, there's been a lot of super glue used and poly cement as well. Um, there have been a few mishaps recently which have delayed and set, set it back. Um, but overall, uh, there are no available specifications for the wagons. I've been approached a couple of times asking if um, 
I got any dimensions from anywhere, as there were a couple of people interested in building one. Um, no, I haven't received any uh, anything from Cowan Sheldon, uh, the company who manufactured these. Um, I've literally just got done everything by eye um, from photographs that I've taken on the off chance that I was at Eastley um, one day when I was passing through. So I'm quite thankful actually that I took those photos. There's not actually a lot of photos of these um, around. It's mainly either at high speed passing through stations um, or um, just in yards miles away uh, from being able to get any half decent uh, photos of any detailing. I haven't really gone into much depth since I showcased the model back in December so uh, let's take a closer look at it. So all of this has all been done as I said uh, just by photos and by eye. Um, all the rollers um, in the front where the rails come off of the main wagons um, those were all uh, sized up um, by eye and to be honest they look all right um, again all the parts in there um, and the sides these were the most awkward parts uh, to fit believe it or not um, literally because you've only got a tiny little uh, part in there to be able to put it up against Um, I have started filling uh, the sides of it. I should have done this uh, well before um, I even put paint anywhere near it. But being new to conversions, it's a learning curve, as you could say. So, uh, yeah. Um, I did have some operational issues with this originally. So, down at this end, um, to be able to get those um, rail shoots in, um, I did have to cut away part of the coupling mechanism at this end, uh, so I've had to go um, again. I've had to go again and put in some plastic card just to reinforce it um, to stop it from jamming up. But either way, um, it operates nicely um, in the sense of operationally, which I'm quite pleased with, as I hope to have this as an operational and not just a static sat in the wagon, sat in the siding set. So most recently I've been working on the main control cabin of it, um, this I've made it so far so that I can detach it. Um, this is probably the most intricate piece of work um, I've ever done in my life. Um, all of um, the meshing that is accurate um, stainless steel, um, it's incredibly fine mesh. Got that from a company up north, I think Warrington Way. Um, all of the handrails, I've made them myself out of plastic card. Just everything really. Um, everything you look at it, if it's not metal, it's plastic card. That, so for uh, doing this, that red, um, that's all the proper pipe. Um, that was uh, one of the Humbrol red paints. I think it's 64, I think it is. Um, or one of the red paints. Then the yellow I gave it over a coat of 24 um, before putting on um, some of the uh, rail match paints warning yellow. And then for the rest of it I just used the Phoenix Precision Paints uh, rail track cream. At the front you'll notice that I've had a couple of uh, mishaps with it and the glazing has uh, torn. Now this was originally uh, the, an experimental end as I didn't know whether I was going to trial out uh, some PVA glue which is uh, what I used for um, the more difficult parts or whether to use um, some 0.5mm um, clear styrene sheet. Apologies for the sutter in there. Um, I did end up making um, three or four um, of the bottom tri panels. However, um, when cutting out the when cutting them out in plastic card, um, two out of three of them broke. 
so that one was the only one that I had left and I tried cutting out um, some plastic card sheet for it to try and put in there some clear plastic card sheet and it just wasn't having any of it um, so just for the ease of it I went for some PVA it hasn't lasted the test of time so I have no doubt that at some point um, when I muster the strength to or the mental strength um, I will um, detach that section uh, from the main body and just hope that I can get it back on there without damaging it at all and I'll be replacing the PVA um, with uh, some clear styrene sheet as you can see uh, from now you've got the little operator in there there's also some other details um, such as a little uh, control panel and that just to his left hand side but yeah it's incredibly intricate um, for the um, for the guarding um, the stand actually going up uh, you can see that I've actually had to drill some holes there um, again time and time and time is required for this project so uh, it is extensive but either way it's coming on okay and uh, that's what I've been hoping for right I know I've rambled on there a little bit but either way uh, that's where I am with the YEA at the minute I do have some other uh, separate parts to separately fit uh, such as the little uh, little steps that will go up the side of it um, and then also um, just coming out the top of the chutes I've got the little uh, rollers there just incredibly fiddly and honestly I've lost my patience um, a couple of times with it now detail for the YEA um, because there are no transfers around for them because they're not a mass produced model I'm producing my own now I'm doing this on Microsoft Paint and mainly just because it's an easy it's an easy software to use it's pretty much pre-installed on every computer so you can work on details anywhere and just email it to yourself if you're not in the office or you, you get where I'm coming from but yeah just to uh, make the model look as high quality as possible uh, I've decided to uh, get onto paint and just try and um, make as many details as I can um, to the best of my ability and that and I've got some decal paper so that I can have a go printing them out um, one thing as well that I will mention about these um, is that getting the scaling right um, for just home transfer making um, I print it out on publisher so and with publisher you've got a little scale so you can um, kind of get an idea of what kind of size you want it and you can set the x-axis and it'll tell you what the y-axis will be etc so it automatically scales it down for you and that's so if you've got a transfer like the danger overhead live wires um, which you want to be uh, one mil in width and two mil in height. You just put two mil height, it'll come out one mil width, and Bob's your uncle. And you've got it there, and so the size is right, so you don't have to print it out constantly on Word and readjust it. It's a handy little tip that I learned and thought I'd share with you, and that is it saves paper um, and also saves time and frustration. So continuing on with the rail delivery train, um, I've been working on the JZAs again recently. Um, these started off life as Hatton's FEA wagons um, and bought over the period of several months. Uh, these were, I think, precisely the transplant yellow versions. Either way, quite nice, quite striking um, as yellow, or when they were yellow on the layout, um, although I never actually ran them. Um, I've only got one example in front of you, uh, which is in the uh, almost complete condition. Um, I'm going to be redoing the metal work on that as I think it looks a bit shoddy as uh, time's gone on. 
I've got another two in this middle condition, so I've got three like this quite nicely, taking my time on it. Um, and then I've got the other seven um, in the freshly blasted condition. I opted for blasting simply because um, soaking them in isopropyl alcohol for a few days uh, was just simply a long process. Um, I could only fit two um, of the wagons in at a time. So and if um, two wagons are going to take about four days to do, um, I would have been looking at a good number of weeks. Um, and when you're painting especially, um, you get a bug for things, so like the airbrush bug, you want to bash it all out at the same time. And then when that bug wears off, you don't really have any more motivation to do it. So I'm trying to get them through as a batch. Um, and that, So I've got the first batch. I'd like to think of the first batch of four and then the second batch of seven. Um, I am working on the racks for these at the minute. Again, no dimensions provided. Um, literally just trial and error to work them out. With regards to painting the models, as I haven't really gone into any detail on this, um, what I started off with was Universal Primer. Again, I've gone for the Rail Match um, brands of paint here. Um, so I started off with Universal Primer. Um, I just gave it one coat of that. Uh, and then I went for polished steel as I thought, well, when it's in the works, before it actually gets its final coats, um, it will look like polished steel from where it will have uh, angle grinders sanding it out down and whatnot. So then once I'd uh, done that, I only gave it one coat of polished steel and then I gave it one coat of uh, weathered black to give it the, uh, the black effect. It looks quite nice. Uh, the only detail that I will, I will say that the only detail that I've actually kept on there is the air tank, and that's mainly because uh, looking at photos of them that I've taken, and also on Martin Reed's website and various uh, posts on Flickr, um, the only real noticeable uh, features on them are the air tanks. Other than that, there's no real uh, details to them, like air pipes or anything, and that's so the details minimal on them and they won't really be seen either because they'll be covered up but either way trying to make them as realistic as possible something i think should be highlighted is that regarding the hatton's feas um the buffers on them are not very nice let's just put it that way they come in two parts or they should come as the one part fixed into um, the wagon itself. However, as highlighted by uh, Gowerton Parkway on his Class 66 review, um, there is a fundamental lack of quality control at the factory. So I received some of these FEAs um, with either buffers like so, just lying in the box. One box even had a missing buffer and another box had um, that missing buffer in it so uh, I wasn't too pleased about that and the fact that almost half the buffers that came more or less in the second batch the first batch was okay uh, just the second batch so the most recent batch produced by them um, there's just hardly any glue or or signs of any adhesive used so um, and even then when you try and do try and handle some of them that are in there um, they just fall to bits so um, taking into account that design error, um, I've decided to take things into my own hands uh, and use uh, some of the um, ones that actually stick together um, as patterns to resin cast my own. So I've just gone about this by buying some silicon rubber um, off of eBay, uh, mixing it up, making a pattern with um, some plastic card. Um, for some runners and risers so that I can make a full wagon's worth um, of buffers in just one pour. Hopefully this will work is experimentation. I've never done anything like this so uh, resin casting is a first for me although I have a friend who does it so um, I've got uh, advice on hand. 
but it'll be a handy skill to have um, and especially uh, something um, that I can expand on in the future. So hopefully those will go well and uh, the entire um, fleet of buffers uh, from the 11 wagons I can just chuck in the bin and say see you later. On a lighter note and continuing with the JZAs, I've been working on the racks. Um, so I started this prototype back in September. Um, now this rack um, is made completely out of plasticard. It is incredibly tiny and very fiddly. So I ended up making all the little separations um, out of strip and then um, all the rollers out of rod and it was just incredibly painful. Um, they take about six hours or so to make um, just for the piece that I'm holding in my hand. So very inefficient and at the time I didn't really have access to anything else. However, as of about six weeks or so ago, um, when I started to make them again, I um, should show you quickly first, um, I did actually make um, an two um, after the prototype um, that made it onto the original JZA that I'm planning on redoing, um, painted into Phoenix Precision uh, rail track cream with the rollers going into Dark Earth. So I managed to design on AutoCAD um, some racks and then I got them laser cut um, down at a company called Hey Create, just down the road from me at Alder Hills. Um, so here we go and in a fraction of the time, this takes me about 20 minutes, all I've got to do is just cut the sections of rod. That is a chore in itself, however at the minute, somehow, I find it quite therapeutic. Um, it will always one. I'll always wonder how uh, I can bear to do it, even after about making ten of them. But either way, uh, I can make these in about twenty to thirty minutes, and that's so I can easily bash out about four to five in an afternoon. And then also with other parts made. And that's so the brackets. I've also got the uh, end stanchions laser cut as well. So I've got these done for a very good price, so uh, I can't complain and I've saved myself a lot of time and effort as well. So hopefully uh, with this the JZA project is well on the way to completion. Now the final piece of the rail delivery train is the rail selector JZA wagon. This is the one that sits just behind the YEA. Um, again, is crew operated, um, selects the rails and pulls them down uh, towards the chute. Now, this, as you can see, is still in its KFA format. I haven't done any work on it whatsoever other than uh, strip it down before I glass blasted it. That was done back in September, so I haven't done any work on it for a good five months now. So uh, I will do it. I will get onto it once the YEA is done and probably when the other J's and A's are done as well so that the workbench is freed up and I can just focus all my time on it. There's no time scale for um, the whole rail delivery train to be done. I know I started it last August and the clock is ticking but I'm hoping to have it done by the end of the year if I'm lucky. Now finally uh, we come to the last piece that's been on the workbench and that is this middle car of a cross country class 220 Voyager. I bought the Voyager set on Hatton's a good couple of months ago. I'm pretty sure that I featured it somewhere uh, in a layout update. Um, but either way, um, this was bought DC, uh, no DCC socket whatsoever. and Last week I decided to hardwire it to DCC. I used a ESU Lockpilot V4 a DCC chip for that. First time I've ever hardwired anything and to be honest 
it wasn't actually that difficult. Tested it, runs okay. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with it. I do have a few other things to do on the end cars. So there is a forum on the internet somewhere regarding a uh, DCC upgrade of uh, class 220s and 221s. So I'm going to be redoing the lighting on it and fitting it with accessory decoders. This is all totally new to me and is a, a leap in the dark. So uh, I'm hoping it will be worthwhile and it will come out and I can add the Voyager to my passenger fleet. It has been noted uh, on the April running video that somebody said um, about that I should convert my, uh, or actually respray, re sorry, should respray my uh, 158 into Southwestern Railway livery. I'm actually thinking of doing that. So that will be a few. That will be a future project. Probably not one for the next 18 months or so, as I've got enough on my hands at the minute. But I do have a class 158 in Northern Red livery uh, up in the loft that I bought months and months ago, probably the end of last year. So that with that, I will be um, hardwiring that to DCC. Whether I'll be sorting out any lighting on it or not, that's not for me to think about at the minute. But when I find uh, suitable paint um, to put it into Southwestern Railway livery, uh, than I will. But other than that, the new tooled Backman 158, I'm not going to go anywhere near it with the airbrush and I'll most likely just retransfer it over to Southwest Trains and have it in uh, its final days uh, before it became Southwestern Railway back in 2017, I think it was. That pretty much concludes it now. I've got nothing else on the workbench at the minute to talk about, and I won't go into uh, anything to do with the paints or the Humber or poly cement, and that is, uh, as I don't think you really need to know about that. But either way, um, that pretty much just rounds it off. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. If you do like this video, then as always, feel free to like and comment. Um, I am thinking of doing a little bit more uh, on the workbench side of things as I get a bit more confident and whatnot. So uh, I might even take you through a little bit with the JZA progress. But either way, uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.